Often when someone starts to get interested in the stock market, the very first question they ask is what's the next big stock that I should buy? But in my opinion, that's really not the question they should be asking, and I think it alludes to a bigger overall misconception about the stock market. So in this video, we're going to talk about that. My name is Charlie, and on this channel, I make videos about building wealth and achieving financial freedom so that you can free up your time to focus on the things that you truly care about. So usually I talk about the specific strategies that I use to generate income from the stock market. And if this is your first time here, I'll leave a playlist below for you to check some of those out. But this video is going to be applicable whether you're trading or investing for the long term, because we're going to talk about the mindset around choosing stocks and the most common mistakes that you should avoid when it comes to that. Because I think that having the wrong mindset about stock picking and really about the stock market as a whole is where most people who aren't successful in the stock market go wrong. And the way I see it, there are really two main types of people who aren't successful in the stock market. The first is those who think that it's all about picking the next big stocks. So they'll invest in smaller, more speculative companies, hoping that they make it big, but the large majority of the time, they never do. And I get that it can be enticing when you see stories about people who invested in a company like Apple or Amazon in the very early stages, and their initial investment is worth something like 100 times the initial value. But that's not how most people get rich in the stock market. And if you want to be consistently successful to the point where you can actually build long term wealth, you don't need to find the next big company. The best way to ensure that you're successful is just to invest in already established growing companies and to ride that growth upward. Which leads me into the second category, which is the people who find the stock market too complicated or think they're not smart enough, so they don't bother with it in the first place, or they end up paying someone else to handle their money. And let me tell you right now, you are smart enough to be successful in the stock market. It doesn't take some sort of complicated technical analysis or amazing foresight in order to pick the right stocks. In fact, if you're just looking for stocks to buy and hold for the long term, most people are going to be best off just buying an S&P 500 index fund and calling it a day. So it really can't get much simpler than that. But if you're looking to buy individual stocks, which you likely will for stocks that you're trading, all you need to do is look for already established companies that are growing on a consistent basis and that the larger institutional investors like to invest in. Because the majority of money in the market is not held by retail investors like you and me. It's held by those larger institutions, so they're the ones who really move the market. And they mostly like to invest in established blue chip companies, many of which pay dividends and are included in the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. So that's a big reason why you might see a lot of smaller companies with promising looking growth, but the stock prices don't seem to increase because they just simply don't have that institutional money pouring into them. So I've found that you'll see a lot more success sticking to mostly solid established companies, namely components of the Dow Jones Industrial Average like Apple, Microsoft, Nike, and Visa, or at least members of the S&P 500 like AMD, Best Buy, Target, and PayPal. And when it comes to these types of stocks, really the biggest driver of growth is increasing revenue over time. So when you see these companies like Microsoft and Target with very strong revenue growth year over year, that's telling you that those companies are continuing to grow and therefore their stock prices should continue to rise over time. And again, these are well established companies that aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So really, as long as I see that revenue growth and I see a strong upward trend in the stock, which tells me that there's a lot of institutional involvement, then that's usually a stock that I want to own. Now, when it comes to selling covered calls, which is the main strategy that I talk about on this channel, I know that it can be tempting to trade cheaper and more volatile stocks because those stocks tend to yield higher premiums. But that's a pretty short sighted view because if those stocks don't tend to rise over time, Number one, you'll be missing out on the capital gains that you'd collect when your shares get called away from you. But also if the stock actually falls in value, you'll be bringing in much smaller premiums until it recovers, if it ever does. So in the long term, you'll see much better returns by trading more solid stocks. So that again, you'll not only be bringing in consistent solid premiums, but you'll also be taking advantage of the majority of the upside in those stocks. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't trade any of those more volatile stocks because they can be great for increasing your premiums, but you'll just want to keep them as a relatively small portion of your portfolio. Because again, the stock market is not a way to get rich quick, and trying to treat it that way will only lead you to take on too much risk and ultimately to be unsuccessful. So as with most things in life that are worth doing, you have to be patient and stay disciplined, and over time, you'll see success. So if you want to see my full covered call writing breakdown, which again is the main strategy that I use to generate income from my portfolio, be sure to click that playlist in the bottom right corner of the screen. 
Thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all in those next videos.